Good afternoon, everybody. Well, it's afternoon here. Grace and peace to you from our Lord Jesus Christ and all the saints here in uh, Central Smoky, California. Um, yeah, I had an idea on a video I was going to do. I was going to do another one of those airplane weekday updates, or week, week, weekly updates uh, from the airplane while I was flying. Uh, but it is so smoky right now, we, we can't even go outside, much less um, I can fly anywhere. Can't see anything. Um, right now we've got about maybe half mile visibility here on the ground. Might be a little better up there. I don't know. No, I don't want to find out. I can barely breathe outside anyway. Imagine going camping and uh, you know how you, you get a campfire going and the smoke comes to you. So you move over and then the smoke comes to you again. It's like that here everywhere. It's, it's like campfire smoke everywhere. And uh, it's just, just horrible breathing. So instead, what I thought I'd do is just kind of uh, show you a few config commands, what little I know of our new uh, fabric switches. Um, these switches were uh, originally made by Avaya, which was uh, um, purchased by Extreme Networks and incorporated into their lineup. Um, they wanted that fabric technology that Avaya was offering. And uh, that's basically where it comes from, is Avaya. So I'm going to share my screen here. Give me a minute. I'm still not super good at this. I'm just going to share my putty session. There we go. I'm going to make this big so I can see it. There we go. So uh, after you log in, it's a lot like a Cisco, um, a lot like a Cisco switch. Where um, normally extreme switches, uh, you log in as a super user. Um, but uh, with with uh, the new, uh, they call it their, their VSP, the VOS operating system, VSP switches, um, you log in as just a regular old dumb user. So you got to go to enable mode just like you would on a Cisco. And if you want to configure anything, it's config T, just like on a Cisco. Um, that's new. When you Normally when you logged into a, a uh, an extreme switch, you are you logged in in config mode. And uh, when you made changes, at least on the old uh, secure stack series, the change was made. There's no uh, saving the config because I think they're saved like what every six seconds, something like that, um, automatically. And then with the new XOS switches, uh, EXOS, XOS switches, um, you did. You, you still show up in config mode, but at least you have the choice of saving the config or not. So if you really get it screwed up, you can always just reboot and you're back to where you were. Um, and this is and that's a lot like Cisco. This is even more like Cisco. Or like I said, you log in and you're 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 not in any mode to do any harm. Uh, you can look at stuff and that's about it. Um, so. Uh, yeah, otherwise it's just a lot of the same commands, I think. I'm not a Cisco guy, so uh, I don't know, but they, they seem very Cisco-ish to me. So you want to know what's in there, you do a show run, and um, that's how you can take a look at what your config is. Um, you can also, uh, I'm sure Cisco has something very similar. I can just show run module port and just look at the port config. And um, that's a lot of the configuration changes I've been doing this week, which is basically just, as you can see here, um, we're plugging in um, our closets. So our closets are already connected into our existing switch. Um, we're gonna have a second connection from them into this series of switches, um, the, four, the four cores. Um, so to do that, we're, we're setting off setting aside an interface on each of the two cores that are in our data center. Remember, we have two of the cores in our data center, two of them down in our MDF in the basement of the hospital. And uh, so uh, my thought is to use the same port on each four to connect all the switches. So right here, um, let's go with this one, switch 82. Um, that's gonna plug into uh, port module one, port one, on each of the four switches. Now the ones in the basement, that's how they're connected right now. They're connected on an S series, an S4, and that's where they are. One, one, when we're ready, we will move them over to 
the two new cores, the fabric switches in the basement. Um, we're going to go ahead and start moving them on to uh, the fabric in the data center sooner than that. But each, each port one, module one, port one on every switch is going to go to switch 82, which is in one of the closets out there. I can't remember which closet it is. Um, so what I've done so far this week is just go through on each interface. Um, actually, it's not even, you don't even need to go to each interface. Um, you, if you just go into interface mode, just like you would on a Cisco, so I would say um, interface gigabit ethernet one one. And this is where I could, uh, what is the command name? Sorry. Name the port, so one one. What? Uh, uh, I'll just call it switch 86 again. <laughs> How about that? Oops. Sorry. You can tell I am not a Cisco guy because I'm not used to doing this. Name. Port. One, and then now, there we go, switch 82, was it? Yeah, I was getting ready to start it, Just type 86. 82, it's the smoke, I tell you. I don't know what's burning up in the hills, but our heads are like, whoa, man. So there you go. So I'm, I am I entered into interface mode under uh, gigabit ethernet 1.1, but I can go through and name all the others um, just from here. And that, that's exactly what I did. So like, I don't have to change over to um, interface gigabit ethernet one, two. I can just change the name right from here. Go here, do that. Oops. I thought I'd selected it. I guess I kept talking and selected something else. So there you go. And that's basically what I did is I went through and named all the ports. And uh, so I knew where things were going to go. So I've not only got the cables labeled as to what port they plug into, I've got the ports labeled as to what cable is going to plug in there, uh, what switch is going to connect. Um, so I did that for all the switches. So my next task is going to be to um, go through and assign all the VLANs. And uh, assigning VLANs on this thing is something I am still learning. Um, because, and maybe some of you guys know, maybe, maybe it's the same command in Cisco, I don't know. But one of the things I found out is to assign a VLAN to a port, I've got to do that, I've got to go into the, the inter so I'm already in interface mode for Gigabit Ethernet 1.1. So if I wanted to add a VLAN to that port, it's um, VLAN member, uh, you notice how I'm using the question mark a lot? The question mark is your friend. So I'm going to add a VLAN. What VLAN am I going to add? I'm just going to say VLAN 140 because I don't know what VLAN I want to add. And that this is a common VLAN I use. And I'm going to add it to 11 and make it a port member. So as of now, just learning fabric, this is the only way I know how to add a VLAN to a port. I do that, ta-da, that VLAN, that port is now a member of that VLAN. Okay, so this switch is probably gonna have uh, probably 10, 15 VLANs on it that I need to add to the trunk ports. Now on the other switches I had, I could just say add VLAN 100 through 120. So I, I would basically do this. Um, set VLAN egress 100 through 120, GE.1.51, or we'll say 1.49. I could do that. Hopefully you guys can see that down there. And that would add VLANs 
100 through 120 to, to uh, 49 tagged or untagged. I cannot figure out how to do it. And they said there's a way and they were going to tell me. And we were all working on this yesterday at work. And uh, I had to go home. I had to leave. I'd been up since three. And I told them, sorry, guys, I got to go. Um, so they were going to show me how to do this same thing uh, without having to go into do this all over again. See, otherwise, I would have to do the same thing. You know, VLAN members add 141, one, one port member. And if I've got 10 or 15 VLANs to add to, I don't know, 15 or 20 ports on four switches, that's going to get old. Now, I'm using the same ports on every switch, so that's, that's kind of easy. That makes it easier for me because I can use the same script four times. I mean, I develop it for one switch. It'll work on all of them. But uh, anyway, that's, that's what we were doing basically this week. We were, we were cabling up the, the, uh, the closets, so from the fat fiber patch panel to the switch, um, documenting all that. I put labels on, which I believe I made a video about. And uh, then we did this. So, yeah, not, not a whole lot there so far. And I don't have a whole lot of knowledge on this to share with you, other than I did finally pass the test, woohoo! Um, which the, I'm a little disappointed with the test. Um, let's see, I'm gonna stop the share because we're kind of done with that. Uh, I'm a little disappointed with the extreme test because it doesn't really test your knowledge of day-to-day -day usage or troubleshooting of these switches. It seems geared more towards uh, selling or marketing. So a marketing guy or a technical engineer that's in, moved into sales. Um, seems more about talking about the capabilities of the switch. That's what they test you on. Um, that's all fine and good, but I, I'd like to learn more of the nuts and bolts. So. Honestly, I, I didn't get that much out of the extreme fabric class. Sorry, extreme. Love you guys, but you need to work on the class. And I know you will. They will. They'll, they'll get it going. Um, so anyway, that's all this week. I just wanted to show you a few little commands in here. I'll show you more as I learn them. And uh, yeah, you can see exactly how much I don't know about these. So uh, yeah, we'll get into... Uh, um, I'm going to have to start creating uh, lags on this and, or not lags, multi-link trunks, um, which if you know what a, a trunk is or a lag in the extreme world, it's, you know, you take two, two uh, cables to hook up to the next switch and they're trunked. So basically instead of one 10 gig uplink, you've got a 20 gig uplink. Um, you know, multi, and that's from one switch to one switch. That's what a lag or a trunk goes to, one switch to one switch. The uh, multi-link trunk goes from one switch to multiple switches or multiple switches to multiple switches. Um, so I'll, I'll be learning how to set up, that up and I'll share that with you guys in the coming months because I'm going to have to set up, uh, what did I count? 25 closets, so 25 MLTs, multi-link trunks, um, 50. So 25 to the basement, 25 to the data center. So. Um, I should be fairly good at it by the time I've set up 50 MLTs. <laughs> so anyway, and I should have more to share. I, I feel like this was like, you, I gave you guys a taste and you're like, ah, what? where's the meat? So sorry, well, there'll be more meat to come. I just wanted to give you a quick look-see and uh, peek into the switch. So sorry guys, that's all I got for this week. It is pathetic as it was. Um, it is what it is. And uh, luckily, God sustains me through learning this new stuff. It's not easy for an old man. Uh, God's going to sustain us through the fires here in California. And uh, God will sustain you all wherever you are. And uh, I'm re I really, love. by the way, I'm really lo loving to read these comments of uh, people that are, that are getting into the uh, field, becoming network admins or getting work on a help desk. And, and honestly, that's how I started into the whole network admin thing is work on a help desk. Um, but I love reading those comments of you guys uh, uh, getting into this and, you know, being inspired to try and anybody can do it. You know, I, I didn't go to network admin school. I learned, I learned on the street, <laughs> you know, I learned on the job. Uh, you can do it too. The main thing is get your foot in the door 
and then show a willingness to learn and, uh, and uh, you know, cozy up to the network admin guys that you know, see if there's things they'll teach you. If you show an interest, your network admin will, will definitely share things with you and teach you because uh, most, most people do. Men and women love to teach other people who want to learn. So anyway, that's all I got for this week, guys. Thanks a lot for watching and being patient with my lack of content this week. Um, but as always, uh, if you like what you see, hit the subscribe button, click the notification bell if you want. And uh, other than that, more importantly, uh, give God all the glory. Soli Deo Gloria. God bless. We'll catch you guys all next week. Boop.